Oh no, who we got woke up this morning? Right, uh, what have I got here? I've got morning Mick, morning Derek. If you can hear me, Let's scan the chat. Morning Fred, morning Kevin, morning Wayne, morning Douglas, sounds good, that's good, we're running solo this morning because Joe, he's asleep, morning Steve, Them, greet dancing. Well, if they come flying off the chuck, we'll do greet dancing and plate throwing. How's that? Morning, Neil. Morning, Leslie. Morning, Mad Mike. Morning, Douglas. Morning, Martin. Morning, Mac. Morning, James. Not so warm here this morning. We've actually had a bit of rain about 10 minutes ago. So uh, it might cool down. Morning, Robert. A bucket of ice water here, that might do it. I could stand in it while turning. Morning, Brian. Brian, if you're watching, This is the Simon Oak double-ended gouge in a long handle. Literally release it and you've got a fingernail grind at this end. If I bring that up to the camera you'll see the fingernail a bit more. And if we turn it over you've got the standard grind the other end. So you literally in twist, standard grind, little twist out Flick it over, lock it up, long grind. Simple as that. Morning, Michael. Yeah, I put me fake tan on just for this this morning. Just for you, Michael. Morning, Nick. Morning, Clive. Morning Brian. Morning Dunk. Morning Chris. Hi Rob. Uh, Jax. Oh Colin you're in. I hope you got your art out on. Morning Paul. Hope you're well. Morning Nigel and Alison. Yeah, the quick release system, Derek's really good. I like it. Sun lamps, no. This is what you get for painting outside in the sunshine. We've been fitting it in between jobs. So I've got a brown head, the rest of me is white. No, oh, hands, a little bit brown, not a lot. Done a flying plate. We're gonna use a vacuum truck. And if the vacuum gets it wrong, the plate goes flying. 
Simple as that. Morning, Mark. How are we doing for time? Oh, we've got a few minutes yet. Morning, Shay. Yeah, I think I'll have to get a crown when I thread cape. That would be quite good, wouldn't it? Eh? Be different. Instead of a smock, we'll wear a cape. Could wear a mask. Could be Batman or Robin or something. Yeah. Ah, morning, Mr. Wolf. How are you? Morning, Roger. Good evening, Charlotte. Thank you for joining. I hope you're well. Yes, Mark. Nice. Like that. A new hat. Yeah, I could wear it while I'm painting. It wouldn't be too hot, would it? <laughs> Bobbling. <laughs> Morning, Andrew. Morning, Keith. Yeah, I read your post, Charlotte. Fingers crossed that it all works out. Things improve for you. Checking me pockets for pencils and the bits that I need throughout the day. Mm. A random Allen key. I don't know why that's in there. I'll be looking for that later. Morning, Richard. We're going to, uh, right, we're 10 o'clock, so we're about to start. Now, this morning, I'm on my own, so I've got my fingers crossed that the old computer and internet gremlins don't kick in too much. Morning, Helena. Uh, if I pronounce that right, I'm rubbish at pronouncing things. Um, so, I'm going to do my best. If it all falls over, bear with me while I bring it back up to speed because we got no joke um, it's VJ day today so I've set an alarm at 11 o'clock uh, there's a two minute silence so if everybody's happy we'll observe the two minutes uh, silence at 11 so I'll go stum at 11 and at two minutes past I'll start waffling again so that'll be it so the plan this morning is we're going to turn uh, a couple, couple of three little blanks into small plates. Uh, the reason they're small plates is because I didn't have any big... Oh, Joe's up. Joe's here. So, all of you saying that Joe don't get up in the mornings, he's here. So, he's here, so you can all say, morning Joe. Um, now, as you can see, there's a chunk out of the back of that one. There's a chunk out of the back of that one because they're only going to be shallow to be small plates. Uh, and this technique you can use on thinner pieces of wood. So what I've done is I've pre-drilled a 50mm hole in there to bang it on the jaws to get us started. So I'll come over to the lathe and we'll go overhead if I push the right button. There we go, over it. We'll slip the chuck onto the lathe. Da da da. Chuck on the lathe. And then all we've got to do is literally wind the jaws in. Now it might get a bit noisy in here today because I've got the big compressor on. It's got a lot of air in it. 
but when we use the vacuum chuck, if it starts falling short, it will kick in. It sounds like a pneumatic hammer drill. So I've expanded the chuck into the blank. Speed down. Turn it on. Stand out of the way. Turn it up. That's fine. Now, as per normal, we can bring up the uh, live centre just for a bit of extra support bit of security all that sort of thing so I've just locked that off there I wind in the quill somewhere there make sure she spins freely and bring my tool rest up as close as possible so it doesn't foul the wood Safety glasses. Oh, I've got my safety glasses round my neck upside down. A bit like Malcolm and Wise, that would be. Right, safety glasses on. So, turn the lathe on, turn the speed up a bit. Hopefully it's nice and secure. We're at about 1,000 RPM. Tool into my side. Pick up the cut. And we're just going to bring this to round. First of all, what I ought to do is put a bucket behind me to shoot my shavings in. It'll save me having to sweep up later. So I'm just travelling at the speed the wood's coming over the cutting edge. Something like that. We'll check that. There we are. We're nice and round. So I'm going to bring the tool rest out round. Just at an angle here. And because I've got a void, I've got to make sure that I'm not going to catch there. And now we'll just bring in the bottom of the shape for a plate. I'll stop that there, bring the tool rest round a bit. Keep the tool rest as close to the workpiece as possible. The general rule of thumb is you shouldn't be able to get your finger between the tool rest and the workpiece. So we're just bringing a sort of curvy shape into the bottom here. Bring my body around, lift the handle. There, I'm just going to move that tool rest round a little bit more. There. Back of the bevel rub, clean handle forward, pick up the cut. Now I'll take this cut into the middle. ready so that I can uh, put a bottom on the plate there and what I'll do is I'll just remove the tail stop for a minute to get rid of this pip in the middle but well, I don't really want that there and then we'll have a nice flat bottom to deal with and then we'll just carry on tool rest a little bit high drop it down I want my tool cutting on centre as I come through here like that get rid of that pip there Somewhere there. So 
So now I'm going to put a socket. Move the elbow stabber, Oliver. Don't stab yourself before you even start. I wasn't planning on doing red plates. So, remove that. That's out of the way just for a second. <coughs> and now we're going to mark a spigot, a socket rather, in the back. We're just going to do a little recess in the back. I could, because this wood is uh, a bit thicker than you need for a plate, I could actually do a spigot mount. Uh, now, my drawers are 50 mil, so if I allow myself 52, 53, 54, you know the drill. Left hand point, scribe the line, right hand point. Shows us where we're at. Raising the tool rest up a little bit. And then, with me skew, I'm going to just go in and create a little socket and flatten off the bottom like so now I don't know how much of that you can see that's come side on if I don't block you out no, I'll block you out. Let's stay over in. And get rid of that. I only want a socket in here with a few mil. Nothing much. The most important thing is it's flat on the joint so that the jaws sit in properly we don't get a wobbly plate somewhere there and I've got me little skew here which I quite like for doing these recesses I've just slide that along flat into there somewhere there I'm just going backwards and forwards, just using it like a negative brake scraper. Now I'm going to go a little bit deeper because I want to take a little bit more out of the thickness here. Saves me cutting it again. Just drawing the tool back towards me as I go. There. And now I'll just tidy up the inside so I've got a nice taper for the jaws. Get it flat. There. And I'm looking at the opposite side so I can see what's going on. So there's me spigot cutting. The reason I want to go a bit thinner is I've got this sort of two indentations I want to get rid of. So now I can continue with my shape. I'll just come round here, pick the cut up. Somewhere there. leave that on there that will give me my sort of platey shape I've nearly got rid of those uh, nasty bits there that we don't want so now I'm just gonna cut down on that a little bit there and just a very fine cut uh, 
Ah, size. And we'll check that. There we go. That's tidied up our grain. Oh, there's a little bit there. Let's just tidy that up. Uh, just side bevel, roll the handle over, and a very, very light cut. I'm watching the opposite side so I can see any marks. That's got rid of our torn bit of grain there. So, now what I can do is just quickly sand this down. On the underside. I've got a pile of shavings under me, lathe, ain't helping. Can you chuck that extractor on for us, Joe, please? Yeah. I'm just grabbing a... Uh, we can start at 180 for this, so 180. I can tidy the outside up completely when we reverse it in the vacuum. But I can apply more pressure while it's in a proper chuck. So I do just the bulk of the sanding. Now I don't want it to be a sanding lesson, so I'm just going to quickly run this sand around. Uh, you've all seen this before the Simon Hope Pro Sander. Quite simple to use in makes quick job of sanding that'll do yeah you can do that's the outside of our little saucer plate whatever you want to call it so now we should be able to pick up did you say 180 or 80? Mike Wood. Now I've reversed it in the chuck, so I turn my speed down, turn my speed up. She's running true here. She looks well out here because we've got to sort that out. And now we bring this tool rest up and we'll thin down the plate and just hollow it out so we've got a dish. First things first. Just lay this off, face it off, and get down to our thickness. Now, I've just had, oh yeah, we've got plenty. I've just had a nasty fault there. I've got to get rid of this socket in the front. And did I leave enough in the back? And I have. So we're spinning at a thousand RPM. We turn the speed up. And now spin it about. 1500 RPM and I can just move the gas that bit quicker raise the angle as I go slowly work it into the middle And up, that gets me into the middle. Get rid of them shavings. So now let's just have a look at our plate where we're at. Bring tool rest up. So we want to take it down to, I don't know, five, six mils, something like that. 
and now we'll start we'll just have a nice shallow sort of plate not too big a curve on it I'm just taking a bit out the edge there so I've got a guide now I don't want to treat it like that tool rest a little bit I don't want to treat it like a bowl I want a nice shallow surface to it I just look at the side here to get a visual to my depth. And I don't go in so quick so that I get a more shallow more shallow surface now, I don't want the thickest plate in the world so I want to come down just a little bit more and I'm now we're gonna have a little rim on our plate somewhere there like that and now I can push in you won't push too hard guide the tool through Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. <coughs> I had quite a big bit of core in the middle there, so I just eased off. I don't really want to snap this out in the middle, so let it creep up on it. Just cut it away. somewhere there let's have a look see where we're at right so we're nearly there we're a little bump there so we just come in pick the cut up breathe as you go if you don't breathe you fall over but breathe as you go. Feed the cows through your fingers. As you get to this middle, lay off the pressure, guide the tool in. Little trick, as you come into the middle here, can you see this? No, not too well. Let's come sideways on. That one will be better. As you come into the middle here, so your tip's catching, cutting rather, as you get into the middle, if you roll your flute up and just scoop up the back, what is it? this is Sycamore, the back inside wing, will just undercut that little tip, pip rather, and off she comes into your flute. There something like that so now we've got our little plate so what we would do is just give this a quick sand back with the 180 stick the old extractor on Joe uh, back with the 180 
By the time he gets there, I would have finished Sandy. Red stopping it. I'm holding on to it. Ain't stop. I've got a little mark right in the centre there, which is not good. I don't want that, so I'm going to get rid of that. Yeah, it's going to come in, pick the gouge up. That's got it. And now I sand that. Move that around a bit in the middle there. Right, that's our 180. 320. That'll do us. It's just a demo piece. So there's our first little plate. There we are, our first little plate. I say our first because we'll do another one. So we've got another blank. On, open it up. Make sure she's on securely. Stand out of the way. She looks like she's secure. I'm going to bring the tool rest up. We're going to do things slightly differently this time. Because if you were making plates in a production mode, you'd want to be quick. Part of the reason why the demo was named Flying Plates, because this could go wrong. So, what I'm now going to do is turn the lathe back on, ramp the speed up, see if I can go through that vibration, which I have on about 1500 now, and now I just pick up my cut and start coming round straight away. I'm using a long handle gouge is as I come over the tool rest of it here I've got more support from the gouge Did you not tighten the tailstock locking that up? Yeah it's all locked up Oh no Yeah it is now uh, the, We're just dealing with the wood Bringing it down, there's me bit of waste wood for my spigot. I'm about there, I've got a bit for a spigot. Bring me tool rest round, mate. 
I'm not doing it with the tool towel with the wood spinning and moving the tool rest. I can, but I don't think that's uh, a great idea, especially with the tool in your hand. Now I'll just do my fine cut. That tidies up my surface. I'll come into the middle, flatten this bit off. There. I move my towel rest, towel stop right out of the way. Come into there. Round. Vernia, left point, to the right, there's my line, a little skew, pick up, take me longer to pick up the tool, little skew into here, push her in, now clear this away, And then I can come back over, flatten off where my spigot's gonna go. Flatten off the bottom there. Quick sand with me 180. Oh, you cutting up hill. I'm cutting up hill and downhill. Over dial. Over dial and around we go. Um, technically, I should have the support of the fibres, the books say. So the books tell me I should have the support of the fibres. So my highest fibres, if I come overhead to explain. You are, you are overhead. I was overhead. Right, so when I'm cutting, I should cut uphill so the shortest fibre is cut first being supported by the longest fibre so in this orientation I'm cutting in this way if I cut this way my fibres are shorter in this direction well they're not technically because I've got a if I cut that way into the bow I'm cutting the longest fibre first I should be cutting outwards but I find that if you're cutting with a uh, sharp gouge and light cuts, you can cut in either direction. So you just cut, and I prefer to cut inwards, which is technically wrong, but you know it works for me, so I'm quite happy. If I get torn grain, badly torn grain, that I can't tidy up with a fine cut, then what I'll do is cut the other way. Uh, elm, wild grain woods are really notoriously bad for cutting you've got to cut in a particular way I've turned that around we're running true so I'm explaining this as I'm going so it's taking longer than it should do but I come round to here and now I'm ready to face off my blank turn my speed up with 1500 rpm 1600 rpm and then I'll get my cut. You can see the way the shavings are now flying off the lathe. I found side on. And they're flying because we're spinning that much faster. And I'll pick my cut up again now. of that 
Now you see I stayed quiet. The reason I stayed quiet is I'll get a mouthful of shaving. So I've just come in and picked up my rim. Now I come in to make my little saucery shape. Hold my wrist, get rid of that, take the cut up there, just nice and light, all off the body. Gently through the middle, take that middle out. There. And there's our salsa. Now I've got just a little bit of fragmented grain. So now I'm going to come in with a real light tidying up cut. Very fine. Very fine, gently, gently. Nice and gentle through the middle there. Just got a little mark. So just pick up the tip. Very fine. There we go. And now we've got another plate salsa done. Quick as that. Quick sand. Just turn the extractor on in a minute. Just on there, once he's finished type, typing up, taking the mickey out of me, probably. There we go, that's the sanding done. <laughs> Got to go run across the workshop, no need. So, that's how quick you could do a little plate. Now you see here, I've got a bit of torn grain right on the edge. So so I just noticed that, so I'm just going to grab a freshly sharpened gouge and I'm just going to do a very, very fine cut out. Real fine stuff. Get that. Ooh, it's a nasty bit of grain. See how fine that dust is coming off of there. And I'm just trying to eliminate the sanding. That's got rid of it. Good enough for this. I won't bother getting Joe to run over to the extractor again. I'll just do that. There, like that. There we have our second plate. So, we've got a couple of plates done. Now the vacuum chuck. How are we doing for time? I'm taking the... live center out of the tail stock. I'll bring the tail stock up so you can see this. Here I've got a fixed T3 
tapered M3 by 33 threaded adapter. Now I'm not going to turn with this. I just put this into my towel stock like so. Now I take the chuck off the lathe. Uh, I wonder if I can do it just by holding on to the plate. Should be able to. We'll find out. If not, I'll find the spanner. No, need the spanner. Normally I wouldn't do the chuck up quite so tight. Oh, that's it. See, spanners are quite useful for getting hold of your chuck. So I take the chuck off the lathe. <laughs> And now I can wind the chuck onto my adapter. Derek's, Derek's getting worried because you're taking the turn a bit too seriously. Oh. <clears throat> so, so now I've put my chuck onto my adapter. The reason I've done that is it keeps it central. So when I reverse onto the vacuum chuck in a moment, we know we're central. So this is undo the airline. We'll need the airline, believe it or not, because it's a vacuum chuck. I'll push the towel stock out of the way so I can show you this. Now if I get a ball up here, it might make it a bit clearer for you. I'm nothing but helpful. <laughs> so, this rod here goes through the headstock. Uh, it's got a rotating bearing in the middle where the tube fits onto and the tube is fitted to this this is uh, a hole fast vacuum generator so I can run off of an air compressor rather than having to have yet another vacuum pump in here when I've got uh, did you line up the tailstock headstock first oh yeah uh, so that I am no, I didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> so, should we check that? I'll check it in a minute. So, this is a generator. And what it does is it generates compressed air into a vacuum. So, I literally take... I line the headstock up first, actually. Because I'm going to start putting stuff into the headstock. Let me put that down safely on the floor so I can stand on it in just a moment. Let me... Take that out of there, put a live centre back in there, oh, smash the camera, bring that up, I'm sure it's lined up, yeah it's lined up, you had me questioning myself because I didn't do it at the beginning of the demo, I couldn't remember if I'd done it last time or not, I have, you're just trying to sabotage me demo, nasty, nasty social media people who suggested it might walk right uh, Derek. Derek Derek stop interfering right here we go got me bald so me threaded rod goes through my spindle on the reverse side my little captive threaded thing I drop on the floor into the shavings found it it's all right don't panic it's made of an aluminium so it's no good if you drop it deep in the shavings you can't get a magnet to find it you have to get on your hands and knees so i just tighten this up through there then i've got a vacuum cup vacuum cup that just threaded winds onto my spindle There's me vacuum cut. Then all I need is me airline. Airline. Quick release connector on the end. Into there. Wash. I've got vacuum. So then I've got a regulator here. To turn up me vacuum. Now, what you've got to be careful of. I think you need something like... Uh, One one point five uh, N I T L G. I can't read that. 
on the gauge, about here somewhere. But what you've got to be careful of is your wood. If you've got a softer wood, you can mark the wood with the vacuum sucking down on it. So, given that board, all I need to do now is slide my tail stock up to my cup. Turn the vacuum on by rotating the dial and I'll bring it up in between the 1.5, the 1 and the 1.5 mark. Now that should give me a good suction that I can turn off the base, as simple as that. Now you don't want to see this go flying, I'm sure, so let's just remove the chuck. We'll do the other plate in a moment. So remove the chuck to there. And now you can see she's securely fitted on to the vacuum. I turn the speed down. I bring the tool rest into play. Turn the lathe on with the speed down. Slowly rotate the speed up. And there I've got a fixing. Now what I can't afford to do is get a major catch. Yeah, we, we've got to be sensible where we are on a fixing that is not as secure as a chuck. So I can just come in now. And turn away the rubbish that I want to get rid of. Now this is where we find out if I've got my dimension about right. If I haven't, what will happen is I'll come through the middle, join the funnel club, and my plate will come flying off my lathe because there'll be nothing for the vacuum chuck to be sucking up to. You see it's really a slow process because I'm not forcing the cut. I'm just letting the tool glide along to the middle. Like so. And then I just will pay some attention, Oliver. Um, I just slowly move this into the middle, raising my hand as I go. tool rest is just a tad eye there let me drop it down I'll stop the lathe start the lathe back up and I'm just going to come in into there. Now to make something sit nicely on the surface you're better off picking up the cut so I've got the back of the bevel there, lean the handle towards the lathe and I raise the handle just a little bit faster, little curve and I make a little concave foot.
that little noise there, that rubbery noise, was me just being a bit heavy handed. I've got to remember that I'm on a vacuum. I mean, the, the suction on these things is quite uh, strong. I'll show you in a minute. Let's get through there. Yes. Gently, gently. There. Now, what I can do is sand this while it's on the chuck. That looks awful. Now I've turned away, I can see that I've got a real mark there. So I'm just going to float this gouge in very lightly. Real gentle. Ooh. Told you, it made me jump. Compressor's gone off. Just gently in. There, that looks better. If you can hear me above the compressor. So with me 180 again. I'm just coming, sand off the foot. Made me jump again when it went pssst. I'm of a nervous disposition today. I'm worried about the broadband falling over. Worried about me going too shallow and a thing flying off the lathe. What? Push buttons. What do you want? Side. Side. There we go. So I, I'll sand the other plate, do the same again, so you can have it from the other angle. So I've just sanded off the bottom of the plate. There's our plate done. Okay? Now, just to show you, I'm pulling on this. You know, I could pull it off of there, but that's quite a lot of force on there. So that's how well they hold. Yeah? There's a little bit of play because there's a soft neoprene band there. So if you really went hard, you could, but as soon as I turn the vacuum down, off she comes. There, can't move it, gone. The advantage of using uh, a generator, advantage of using a generator over a vacuum pump. My uh, compressors have got 100 litres, so if there was a power cut, it would the lathe would stop but the vacuum would still be intact so unless you've got a vacuum pump with a large reserve um, you could be out so there's our first saucer <laughs> Brian might be a bit difficult what's that so can you show us your compressor um, yeah, I, I, I mean, it I've got four in here Brian <laughs> I've got four now, the reason I've got four compressors, we will spin a camera around to show you one we're using. Um, I had a little Sealy 50 litre and it was as noisy as the one you've just heard and that run everything, drove me nuts. So I then bought a Bambi, it's uh, done on uh, refrigerator motors and they're silenced, what's used in the dentist. Uh, and I bought a double pot thing Second hand, it was expensive, but it's a pleasure. You have your airline guy and you can't hear the compressor. And I bought a sandblaster a while ago. Anyway, the little uh, Bambi, or the big Bambi, doesn't put out enough CFMs, pressure out. Puts out about one CF per pot, so two CFM. It didn't do anything with the sandblaster, forget it. So I then used my noisy compressor, because I hadn't got rid of it. Um, and it weren't all that successful, if I'm honest. And I thought, well, this is rubbish, really. You know, I'll get rid of the sandblaster. 
Uh, then I had a guy come in to take away the Bambi to service it because uh, it, it, I'd had it a few years and not been serviced. I thought I'd get it all serviced up and new regulator. And he looked at it and I said about the cabinet and he understand and he said, your cabinet needs 15 CFMs. 15 CFMs? Yeah, a real powerful thing. So I bought off of Machine Mart an Air Master and it puts out 14.7 CFMs. It's what I've found to be the most powerful that will run off a 240 volt. Otherwise, you're a 16 amp supply or free phase. So that's what I've put in over there. Big thing, tucked away down the other end of the workshop. So it's noisy, but I keep the noise as far away as possible. I think it's 97 decibels, uh, three meters or something ridiculous. Um, and then I bought a miniature Bambi, one pot, for airbrushing, so when I do demos out in the real world, uh, I take that with me. So that's what I've got for. So what I can do now. Right, okay, now that you stop wobbling. Yes. Uh, how much psi does a compressor need to generate uh, the suction and to uh, use it to work? How much psi? Right. I think you need to be able to. I've run it on the Bambi, which is two cfm what CFM is to everything else I don't really know it holds it on but not as tight as the bigger compressor so I would think you really minimum want three CFM of output on a compressor uh, most compressors put out four or five so uh, the Bambis are, are more about the silence so about three CFM uh, and on the gauge there, whatever this measurement is. Ah, 2.5 is the the minimum that you need. So my what Bambi at 2, is that, is it? my Bambi at 2 is just, it holds it, but I, I'm not happy with it. So, and it's on the big compressor. So 2.5 CFM minimum. I say 3. Most compressors run at 3 or 4. So what we've done now is put the other plate on the chuck. Is it a hold fast? This is the hold fast system, yes. It's the hold fast system available at Oliver's Wood Turning. Available at Oliver's Wood Turning and I'll put a link up to it when I've oh. finished. Cubic feet per minute. Well done, Robert. I was just about to Google that myself. Cubic feet per minute. Excellent. Right. So now I've put that on. I'm running the gauge in between the minus one and minus 1.5, whatever that means, I haven't got a clue. I like to think myself a wood turner, not an air compressor engineer. So now I've got the next plate on. How are we doing for time? Oh, nearly 11, so I've set an alarm. So we can do our two minutes silence out of respect for the people uh, who allowed us to live through COVID. I wonder if they're bothered if they knew we were all going to get COVID. So, speed down, turn the lathe on. And I'm slightly out there because what happened is I took the thing out of the chuck and put it back in the chuck. It never goes in exactly the same. It's good enough to turn off the bottom. So I just turn the speed up a little bit, just carefully safety glasses on just in case just carefully take a bit of this down now if I wanted this to run really true obviously I've got to put it back in the chuck and get it right off the chuck uh, did you see that? What I did there is I just bounced on the rim, which jutted it across the jaw a little bit, because I'm not running exactly on centre. There we go. That's levelled it up. Just put a little concave in the bottom. Now, what you would do if you were doing these as a production, I would suggest either you've got to do a phase of them um, 
first one side, take them out of the chuck, get them to the other side. Or, what I do, because I'm fortunate I've got two lathes here, is I'd have one lathe set up with a vacuum chuck, one without, and I would turn one, the outside, take the chuck off the lathe, walk over to the other lathe, bang it on the vacuum chuck so it's never left the jaws, so I don't have to mess about realigning the things. So I'm just going to just come in here, tidy this up, very fine cut. Again, not forcing the cut, just let the gouge glide along. Give it that pip. Oh, man, the problem there, my tool rest was a tad too high because I moved it to turn. A little bit of speed. It just tidied it up quickly. Well, not that quickly, I can only move at the speed of the lathe's twisting. You can see that little wobble, what looks like a wobble on the screen. That's because we are slightly off the centre. There, through there. Now the base of that is now ready for sanding again, so we're not going to sand again, we've seen that. So there we've got a couple small plates, Oop, overhead, a couple of small plates that we will decorate uh, with an airbrush technique. And we going to use the thing. It's 11 o'clock, so I suggest, if you're all happy, two minutes silence, VJ. Hello all, I'm back. That's our two minutes, I set alarms up on my phone. In fact, I'll stop that. There we go, two minutes silence. So, we've now turned a couple of saucers. So if I remove 
my vacuum chuck from the lathe. We don't need this anymore. Hello everybody, is everybody back? I'm back. Our internet fell over yeah, just as running. we came back live after our two minutes. I had an alarm on my phone set at two minutes. Um, so, we did our two minutes, we've done our thing. So, what I've got now is a couple of saucers and we can add a bit of decoration to them. Uh, and new to me on the site today is I've put a new range of stencils on. Uh, this range of stencils are from Chroma Craft in America. Uh, designed by... I'm back here. Designed by Nick Agar, the great wood turning artist. And we've got a range of stencils now on the site. Um, there's two types. There's peel off stencils. The peel off stencils are quite good. You peel them off the backing, push them down onto your wood, uh, and then you can create your outside shapes, peel them up and put them back down. And then you've got what's called infill stencils. Uh, and then you spray over the top and it will leave lines and patterns, much like the pattern that I used on this pot a couple of weeks ago. So, to create what we're going to create today on this, we're using just an infill stencil uh, and another new product. I stock Golden Artist Colours because they're deemed to be one of the superior paints. Um, and in here we've got what's called translucent colours. And the idea of the translucent colours is you will see in just a minute. I'll give them a shake. I'll put them back and we come back to overhead. There. I'll give them a shake. And then we just need a couple of drips in an airbrush. Not many at all. And a little bit of airbrush extender that's the golden one or I've got the um, other one I use is the chestnut products it's just to thin the paint just a tad so with a little shake of that I release that and with my airbrush oops, stuck to a bit of plastic I literally are just going to put if it's, have I got to take oh hold on have I got to take it cap off of there yeah silly boy cap take the cap off drop that on the floor so I'm just going to put one two three drips into there of this this is a purple doesn't matter what colours you use you use whatever and then I'm just going to put <laughs> One, two drips, three drips of extender. Put it back. Mix it up. Yeah, What's that? Is that two drips in the brush and one holding it? Oh, Derek. <laughs> Derek, you're a plum. There's me putting myself out to be abused. So if we use this little design here, it's maple leaf. We just do that. And that was a bit heavy on my behalf, but it won't matter. Then we'll get another one in here. I'm trying not to touch the first one. A bit lighter this time. There. That's better. Paint all over the place. Need a bit of paper towel, which I safely put right under my nose, can't see it, and I'll just dab the stencil off. There. A 
Let's see if we got enough for another one in here. Bit further away makes it lighter rather than a big rush at the end. We get another maple leaf in there. Now what I'm going to do is add, let's try a red. Now the first maple leaf wasn't very successful as you can see because I was heavy handed straight in, full steam. So we'll shake this up. But we can redeem ourselves with this technique to redeem ourselves. See, the other two look much better. If you can see them on the camera, they look like maple leaves, where the first one looks like a big splodge. So now we use a bit of red. Three drips again, or four drips. One, two, three, four, four drips. And I'll put more on my finger than I've put in the airbrush. Nothing unusual there, you all say drips of four drips five drips of extender then I do what's called back flushing just block me end over push the trigger down bubble it up and now we're going to come in with these stencils now ideally there Joe's moving me paint around now what you would do see this will be fairly dry there so I can come over and overlap it. And then, oh, dab the stencil down. And I'll come over to that bad one. And overlap. Now, I don't know how well you can see the effect on the camera so what I'll try and do is something a bit bigger in a moment let's try a bigger maple leaf put a tad more paint now you're far better off far better off to uh, put a very small amount of paint in your airbrush and then put a bit more in. Is that mark from the back of your truck? What mark? In the middle, there's a little mark. Yeah, that's when I was demonstrating the amount of pressure. I turned the thing up to about three on the generator, uh, and that's where you can get a mark. So let's try a bigger maple leaf, and you might see a bit more. Right, so that's a much heavier colour there. A much bigger maple leaf. I'll hold this up to the screen in a bit. So then I'll come over again. The only issue is that light above you is glistening. All right, don't worry. I'll, I'll lift this up in a minute. You'll see the effect. That could have done with a little bit more paint in it. Now the trouble with holding your stencil is it's going to move. Oh, that's not too bad. We've got uh, forward. It's worked quite well, even with a little bit there. So you can see the maple leaves building up. Now if I wipe the stencil off, and then... Go at that old thing we used to do at the OHP, it used to move the sheet around. Yeah, so, now with the translucent colours, what happens is you can still see your other colours underneath coming through. So you can build up layers and layers of colour and overlap. You can see I've been a bit messy that I've got paint where I don't want it. But, um, this is purely to give you the effect. So now I'm going to go in with a bit of blue. I've shook it up. 
the ball bearings rolling around and we go one two three four five six strips of blue we'll go mad mad we're going bit of extender about 50 50 i do with this bring it back yeah sometimes i can count sometimes i can't so if i come over the red there with this blue hold that down also when you're doing this please make sure you wear gloves because otherwise you will have blue purple and red fingers We just pin that down there. Hold it down flat. There. And then we've got some blue. Now let's mix in some transparent yellow. Take the, uh, remember to take the little seal out. Fresh packet, just opened it. So take the seal out, otherwise it won't come out the end of the tube. Well, this is called translucent yellow iron oxidized. They're all iron oxidized. And everybody's telling me this looks gold. So, goldy yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six six strips no expense spared <laughs> one two three four five six six strips no expense spared I spoil you lot and then come back flush that for a mix up and now we can just wipe the stencil off a bit they should hold on let's pay a little bit of attention here Hold on, Harry. Here we come. Then you're better off with two bits of tissue, either side of the stencil. That's why we got a bit of whatever going on wherever. There. And now I can come back in and put a yellow in. There we go, and now we'll come over. Let's try. A bit of um, green, Panflo green, green. We'll try a bit of green. Typical Oliver's fashion, I've covered myself in paint. Nothing unusual there, I know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I quite like this green, so we've got eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bit less extender. Mix it up. And now we'll oh, clean the stencil off. So much to think about. Fingers, hands, stencils, brushes, internet, wood turning. Right, so now I'll come in and I can overlap again. And I just keep going and building up my maple leaf design. I'll dab that off again. Won't be dabbing me off, really. There we go. Get rid of that. Let's put a green over here. Yeah. What's this one? 
Oh, it's another type of yellow. Let's try that. Oh, no, that's the yellow. No, it's another type. This is a bright yellow. Let's try this one. And you see, I don't have to clean the airbrush out because I'm blending the colours anyway, one overlapping the other. I didn't count that time, so I've got a bit more than I bargained for. Never mind, it doesn't matter. There we go. Here we go. Now we can come back. Make sure that stencil's clean. The only reason we make sure the stencil's clean is you don't go and put a big blodge of some ink on where of colour where we don't want it. But as it's translucent, you can get away with quite a bit. Now, because of the colour that I had in there before, these yellows came out green, and now it's getting lighter. Let's build one in there. And then we just keep overlaying. Let's try. You have got to keep. Now normally I've got an airbrush holder. So I've got the airbrush held down as I dab the stencil off. Um, but typical Oliver fashion, I didn't get that ready today. So let's come over here, overlapping this one. Let's go for something a bit stronger. What's this? Oh, brown. Iron brown. Iron brew. Who drinks iron brew? And we've got some shading grey, so we can do some shading. All sorts of stuff. Pull that off of there. Put this brown in, deeper colour. One, two, three, four. <laughs> just give up counting now. <laughs> give up counting, then they're all laughing. Well, we got an, I've got an audience now. Joe was on technical duty. Mrs. Oliver's come over looking for her air dryer, which I've not seen for ages. Back flush that to mix it in. Make sure the stencil's clean. Dab that off. That's probably out of camera my dabbing, but hey ho. Now I can come in here with the brown. Now you would take a little bit more time over this in the real world, not in the uh, YouTube live world. YouTube live world, it, get it done. And we're slowly building these maple leaf design she says, she says good morning back just very quietly <laughs> there and a sort of a ghosty type image if we want to put some little leaves in we can come <laughs> back to the little stencil and put some little ones in <laughs> says your hair dryers in the cupboard <laughs> Derek, your grass. There we go. So you just keep building this up. Uh, the vacuum chuck is made by. It's an American hold fast. Hold fast. Well, it, it's a, a generator. Vacuum generator is the technical thing for it. I'm just going to clean that brush out a bit. Available at Oliver's Wood Turning. If you would like a link, please let me know and I'll have a quick Google. I'll put uh, a link up later. Now, what haven't we used? Well, we haven't used this one. Let's go with one more colour, just for the purpose of. And you just keep building them out and out and out. And you get a display of leaves if I move that off camera. Uh, but the other colours... Oh. You've already opened it. I've already opened this one, that one, the one. Oh, it looks like I've used loads here. I've used that one, used that one. Oh, that one looks 
Alright, we haven't used that one. Rouge. Moulin Rouge. Let's try a bit of Rouge. Hey, what's up, Rouge? Oh, looks like I've used that one as well, or someone's used it before me. Now, what I haven't <laughs> used this one, and what's happened is the little cat that's inside has come out detached. So it's. I didn't think I'd use them all. Gonna fight to get this out. I didn't think I'd used it. There's a couple where I haven't used, but. Would so. you normally seal the wood first? No. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> now I would spray onto the wood that because this is an acrylic color, water based. Uh, and I would let it do its thing dry. I would sand properly to start with. I would, if I was airbrushing like this, I'd sand to 400 grit. I'd then airbrush my pattern on, and once I was satisfied with my pattern, I would spray a lacquer over it. And I would normally spray something like, uh, oh, that splashed up all over the place. Got me smock, me thumb, me nose, everything. Um, I would normally uh, use just an aerosol <laughs> lacquer over the top. Gary, the key point there is the word careful. You can't say careful owner when he's the one that's owned them. <laughs> one careful owner. If you want to buy one of me cars, they've all had one careful owner. Just wasn't him. Somewhere in their history. There. Okay, so I've covered myself in paint. That'll make you all happy. I'll show you that I've covered myself in paint because I know you're not happy if I haven't covered myself in paint. There we go. Wrong way. Wrong way. There you go. Completely covered, sprayed me fingers, everything. You could, of course, use a bit of masking tape to hold it down, keep your hands out of the way. But, you know, that wouldn't be typical. Yeah. Or gloves. That wouldn't be typical Oliver, so let's bring this up. And if I twist that in the light, you should be able to see multiple maple leaves on there. Can you see that, Joe? Uh, yeah. Okay, and all the colours are showing through, because these are translucent colours. So you can build up layers and layers and create all sorts of effects there so there is a little saucer we've used the vacuum chuck we've used the new Nick Agar stencils from chromaclass and we've used the new translucent paint that is now at Oliver's I wood turn I will do the other plate properly later and set a Facebook picture up on it I hope you've enjoyed this morning's demo. If you've got questions, Joe's been shouting things out far away. Uh, don't forget to, if you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you've uh, not done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I thank you all for your support, ongoing support. Uh, if anyone's interested in the Nick Agar stencils, they will be put on the site later this week. Uh, no, Nick Agar stencils are now live on the site. We've put up a new oh, category, uh, art supplies, because we've got a lot of new art stuff coming. Um, next week... The paints are Golden Artist paints. Golden Artist colours, the translucent... The translucents are not on the site yet. Um, and next week, I've got a special surprise for you. We are really going to splash some paint around. Uh, this was only just playing around. So thank you all for watching. 
Uh, I'll hang around to take abuse from all of you as per normal. Although I know you won't mean it because you'll love me really. Um, but if you've got anything, far away or have a good day. <laughs> far away or have a good day. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Thanks, Keith. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Jennifer. I'm reading. Thank you very much, Richard. That's very kind of you. Thank you, Richard. Cheers, Gary. Cheers, James. Glad you've enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Entertaining. That's what I like to hear. Mike says, stop waffling. I have to go into the house and watch some paint dry on the door. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Stephen. Paul, how do you determine the moisture content? Thank you, Brian. Very kind of you. Yeah, uh, a moisture meter is the easiest Thanks, answer, Brian. Paul. Two prongs, plug it in, it'll give you a reading. Cheers, Stuart. Yep, yeah, have a great weekend. Cheers, Shay. Stay safe. Cheers, Derek. Glad you've enjoyed it. Uh, would I recommend a vacuum chuck over a set of cold jaws? Um, I think they've got their uses. Uh, it's an either or. I, I haven't got a preference. My vacuum chuck, if I'm honest, comes out when I'm doing sort of little production runs and I want to be quick, but then I can set it up on two lathes. So uh, there are thin wood, thin wood, fine edge wood. If you're going to do something fine edge, vacuum chuck, because cold drawers can damage the edge. So, yeah, they've got their place. Thank you very much, Martin. Very Thank kind you, of you. Thank you, Wyvie. Thanks for popping along. Cheers, Fred. Thanks for coming. Colin, glad it's been entertaining. I'm looking forward to seeing your sprayed fingers in the near future on Facebook. You got your pro edge, Steve. Thank you, Mark. Cheers, Michael. Take care. Thanks, Leona. Thanks, Roger. Cheers, James. Thank you. My eyes have gone a bit blurry. I should have had my glasses on, I think. Thanks, Paul. Glad you enjoyed it, mate. Take care of yourself. Back to the pro edge. Cheers, Mark. Enjoy yourself. Mind your fingers. Don't sharpen your nails on it, your fingernails. Not a good move. Thanks, James. <laughs> Cheers, Mike. Thanks for dropping by, Mike. And Mike's doing his back live. Good news and bad news. Mike Walt's got his broadband back up. Bad news is he's back tomorrow doing a demo. Should be entertaining. I think he's doing a holophone. Yeah, holophone. No. Uh, Mike Walks live tomorrow evening again. He's got broadband back. I understand his pain. We haven't got broadband back. We've actually had notification from O2 now to say that they're going to have a meeting on the 22nd. O2, O2 open reach rather. Oh, thank you very much, Russell. Cheers, Russ. Didn't need to do that, mate. Um, o open reach are going to have a meeting on the 22nd of August to discuss how they close the lane and trim a tree to run a cable. So, yeah. Mike Wall, ex-friend. Ah, oh, I'm deeply hurt, Mike. Look, oh, oh you've shot me in the heart. <laughs> Derek, ban him, Mike. If yeah. you ban Mike from the demo, no, there won't be a demo, Derek. I think you've got that all wrong, mate. I think you definitely, definitely got confused. 
Cheers, Baz. Thanks for stopping by. A meeting for when they have a meeting. You got it done. Yet they come five weeks ago and so said, be back next week, install your cable. That's not the end of it, because once they've installed the cable, they then have to have a meeting with the engineers that set it all up and bring the router in. So, you know, might be a Christmas present, mightn't it? No, Derek, you can't tell Mike to ban me. I'll have a word with Mike. We'll ban you. The pair of us are going to ban you. You're not allowed to any more demos, Derek. How's that? <laughs> Don't worry, Derek. I'm the only one in this demo that knows how. Right. <laughs> Thank you all for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed your morning. Uh, I've enjoyed doing it as per normal. I look forward to getting dirty with you all next Saturday. Watch out for the post. Take care and thanks again for your support. See you later. Goodbye. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It's really appreciated.